So in this video, we're going to talk about using automation in MailChimp. Automation is just setting up your emails to go out automatically. People also call it drip content because it drips out. Um, they might call it an autoresponder. So basically people will set up, they'll sign up for your newsletter, your email, your whatever, um, usually to get a free gift. You'll send out the welcome email that has the free gift or introduction or thanks for signing up or whatever. Then you can have automation set up so that you have a set series of emails that goes out automatically to the people who sign up to your list. The reason it's really powerful is because you need to build up a relationship with them before they're going to be ready to buy something or to even support you by reviewing or sharing your book. And you need to customize this sequence of emails to build up that relationship. And it can be done extremely effectively. Um, there are systems for it. Usually you want to start off by asking them to reply to you and to tell you something about themselves or to ask like what's the one thing you're struggling with for nonfiction authors. For fiction it's hot, harder but you'd still want to make the first email just try to be like a personal touch point between you and the, the subscribers. So they're not just nobody. You want to try to make that personal connection. Um, but then you'll offer them value for two or three emails. You'll educate if you're doing nonfiction or you have products you'll kind of explain why you need the thing for fiction this is where i would just be telling them a little bit about myself and giving them more of my content more of my book so you might enjoy this book or this book um you could set up something as your offer instead of a free book you could set up something like a serial where you say i'm going to send you a chapter a day for the next seven days to see if you like the book. So instead of reading, getting the whole thing at once, you could set that up. Um, and that kind of gives you like, it gives you seven days of interaction. So instead of just one email with one book where they read it, but you, you're not interacting with them as much, if you can send them a series where they open all of the emails in the series, maybe over a short period of time, it's much more likely they're going to know who you are and remember you um, and maybe like you because you've been sending them really great, useful content. So for fiction, there are different things you can send. Um, you can send book reviews of other things in your genre or other activities or things that are happening. But probably for your automation, you'll try to focus on your books, maybe the best of your books. So when I set it up, I'll probably say, um, sign up to my email and I'll send you the first three chapters of every new book every week or something. I'll give them some writing right away. I might even, when I set it up, I might just paste a chapter into the email so that they don't have to click over to my website or download anything to read. They could just read the chapter right in their email, um, which just increases the chances that they'll actually read it at all enough to get into the story. A lot of people won't. A lot of people don't like to read on email, but you could say, here's the link to download it and here's the content down below if you want to just read it right now. That's the other thing you can do with automation. You're basically, you want to focus on providing value, not really asking for a sale, but just getting them to know who you are and to open your emails. It's almost like training. You, you want to be using a very powerful sequence that builds up a strong relationship in a short period of time so that they remember who you are. And the end of automation is usually to sell something. So you might say, sign up and I'll give you the first three chapters. Or like my sequence might be, you have one chapter on your website. At the bottom it says, sign up for three more chapters. They sign up, you send them the three chapters. You send them a couple more emails that are like, did you like it? Please leave your thoughts by giving me a review or whatever. Try to get them to take some free action first. Um, but then you can finally say, you know, if you really liked it and you want to read the rest of the book, please go to Amazon and buy it for $2.99. Something you could do. I'm not sure. Like, I won't really use my email list to sell books that way, um, which is why you don't necessarily need automation at all. It can be really powerful, especially if you're getting a lot of subscribers, because the danger is 
afterwards, like you might, after a couple of years, you'll be sending out emails to some people who have known you for a really long time. And with them, you can just be really casual and just say, hey, I've got this thing going on, you know, click here to find out about it. But to the people who just signed up on your list, they don't really know you at all. So the automation is kind of a way of giving them some basic stuff, you know, because I've been blogging for like five years. So I have tons of research and articles. If they just sign up, they don't know what to read. But I can structure that experience. I've done it on a few of my sites where, for example, learning about book formatting or book cover design, that's a lot of stuff. And if they just show up on my site, they don't know what to do or what to read first. And if I can make that experience easier by every day, I'll teach them one thing and send them a video about it to give them a process. So it's a lot easier to get into and to digest and to actually learn from. Um, if I can show them that I'm capable of teaching them how to do it, they're more likely to trust me with other things. So it's the kind of thing you want to think about with automation. However, with MailChimp, if you want to use automation, you have to upgrade your account. So it won't be free. So far, all the stuff we've talked about has been free. It's kind of funny. Um, so if I have fewer than 2,000 subscribers, I can send up to 12,000 emails per month absolutely free, which is kind of nice. I think it's going to want to, it's going to want me to pay the $15 a month. So if I want to upgrade to use all of the features, including automation, I think I have to pay. Um, you can check. There are different payment options. $15 a month may seem like a lot. It's kind of an investment. You may not want to do it right away. If you're only getting 10 subscribers a month, I wouldn't worry about it uh, because you can just email them whenever you want to. But if you're getting hundreds of emails a month, you're going to start needing some kind of a process of automation that builds that relationship so that you're not just talking to strangers all the time. Um, it's your responsibility to get people to know you and to talk to them directly, to know who they are, to give them offers that they're interested in. So it's usually worth paying for, but you don't have to pay for it if you don't want to until you get over 2,000 subscribers. Then you're going to be forced to um, start paying for something. It's not that much, but I have like 12,000, 13,000 subscribers. I think it's almost equal. So I pay like $130 if I have 13,000 subscribers, something like that. So it doesn't make sense unless you have a lot of books that you're selling or you have a funnel that's selling a lot of books or you have other things to sell because you don't want to pay $130 a month for email services if you're not selling that many books a month. But ideally, you know, if you have 13,000 subscribers, you should be able to sell a lot of books because you'll be able to do things that most authors can't do, like get tons of downloads or reviews up really quickly. Um, which is why having an email list is so powerful if you get it all set up the right way. I didn't make a video in this series about opt-in offers because the other really important part of all of this is making a good opt-in offer so that people actually want to sign up to your list because that's the main problem most authors have is they just don't have a good enough opt-in offer. But I've actually written a lot of other posts about opt-in offers for fiction writers. So I'll just link to that post so that you can read that um, as well.